In this video I'll talk about the private-public partnership in the financial crime compliance sector to discuss what are the challenges, how the partnership model is evolving and concrete examples of collaboration adopted by some jurisdictions to enhance the fight against financial crime. So let's jump right into today's video. Hi and welcome to FinCrime Agent, my YouTube channel where every week I publish a new video to boost your awareness about anti-money laundering and financial crime prevention. Before we move into the core of the discussion, I'd like to let you know that most contents from this video are extracted from a publication released in July 2021 by ADB Bank called Financial Crime Compliance, The Power of Partnership. I found the information shared in the ADB research on private-public partnership very useful, hence I'm sharing some extract of that document with you in this video. To read the full paper, please check the references included in the description of my video. Criminals and terrorists are becoming increasingly advanced in their use of financial fraud, money laundering and related techniques. Financial services firms and investigative intelligence and regulatory authorities are likewise coming up with new techniques to prevent abuse of the financial system. Arguably the most underutilized asset of those involved in detecting and fighting financial crime is the ability to link up in true substantive partnerships in principle, strategy, approach and execution. So why that is happening? Let's start to look at some of the challenges that are preventing effective and organized private-public partnerships for the prevention of financial crimes. There is a unique dynamic between law enforcement, regulatory authorities, banks and other financial institutions to counter financial crime. However, open dialogue and trust can be challenging to develop and information sharing is complicated. Some of the realities that contribute to this unhelpful situation include legal or regulatory limit on data sharing, especially across borders the understandable authority dynamics between regulators and those being regulated, capacity constraints among intelligence and law enforcement authorities in being able to focus on and investigate financial crime, and a culture of confidentiality in the financial system extends beyond what is legally necessary and impedes dialogue and information or intelligence sharing. Some of these barriers to partnership exist for legitimate reasons while others could be eliminated or reduced. What is needed is a broad realization among interested parties that public and or private industry regulatory investigator partnership are fundamental to success in combating financial crime and its predicate crimes. True partnership models stand out when they are achieved. The evolution of those successful partnerships from initial conversation to substantive coordinated action holds lessons of great value for other jurisdictions. The private sector wants to be part of the solution even as its member walks a fine line between engagement with authorities and the risk of inadvertently not following the rules, not least because standard and expectations can vary significantly between jurisdictions. Public sector authorities are also increasingly open to adopting partnership approaches as they also navigate the right balance between collaboration and the need to maintain an appropriate regulatory posture relative to the financial sector. Sorry for the very quick interruption. If you are finding valuable this video, you can show your appreciation by subscribing to FinCrime Agent and Press the thumb up on the video. This will make it super easy for you to consume more videos published on FinCrime Agent in the future. And as I'm growing my audience, I can also make more videos for you. So thank you for your support. Back to the video now. The industry supports the public-private partnerships model even while acknowledging the complexities and challenges it raises in practice. The fundamental importance of such an approach is coming sharply into focus as the financial crime space gets more complex. Advocacy is needed to advance the evolution of public-private partnerships and by extension improve the efficacy and impact of financial crime compliance. 
This must include both awareness and literacy of the issue at the political level, leading to greater collaboration among international bodies and institutions engaged in the fight against financial crime. Collaboration does not imply a loss of sovereign authority or a compromise of security and confidentiality. Professionals in AML, CFT and financial crime compliance genuinely see the potential to form effective, secure and appropriately inclusive partnerships with full consideration for the authorities' concerns around the issues connected to public-private partnerships. Costs are increasing for a smarter, more strategic use of technology, data and related analytics in the fight against financial crimes. This is relevant to both the finance sector, where detection and reporting of suspicious activities are initiated, and in law enforcement and government, where investigation, intelligence gathering and analysis can benefit substantially, leading to the prosecution of crimes. For example, advocacy and the smarter use of technology connect where data sharing is enabled due to informed political decision making. In such cases, technology and analytics can be applied against the data across jurisdictions to gather actionable intelligence and build solid prosecution cases. When these elements do not connect, opportunities are lost. The industry-level collaboration in the form of KYC utilities, such as the one created by Belgium-based SWIFT, or the one envisioned as a central KYC utility for Asia and the Pacific, reflects how collaboration and partnership are evolving and will materially enhance the fight against financial crime. Development and adoption of such centralized utilities offer the added benefit of leveraging KYC effort and data, thus reducing the cost of KYC overall and potentially removing or reducing the compliance cost element of a de-risking argument. Increasing attention to AML-CFT-related suspicious activity reports is evident in various jurisdictions, including the United States, United Kingdom and Hong Kong, China. Updating processes, enhancing data collection, reporting and analysis, and evolving SaaS to be fit for purpose for specialist areas like trade and trade finance are areas of focus. Financial crime needs to be addressed through focused investigation under a context in which effective, successful interventions from intelligence analysts, law enforcement entities and supervisory and or regulatory authorities can be aimed at the issue. Technology is evolving, professionalism is rising through the association of certified anti-money laundering specialists and powerful and deep analytics are now available. Collaboration and partnerships moving beyond the current challenges can have a significant impact if we can further develop trust between key stakeholders and encourage a shift to substantive collaboration, the impact of financial crime compliance activities can be leveraged and success can grow exponentially. Without this fundamental evolution, progress in fighting financial crime and its predicates will be marginal at best, or its impact relative to growing financial crime activities will get proportionally smaller with time. With that, I'm at the end of today's video. If this video was useful to you, you can show your appreciation and support my channel by subscribing to FinCrime Agent and press the thumb up. Also, remember to check the description to find some useful links, including how to support FinCrime Agent on Patreon.com. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed my video and until next time, see you soon.